Hello, and welcome to this lesson on solving polynomial expressions. This is going to be a lot more factoring. That's really what this lesson is coming down to again. Because um, that's one of the kind of the main thing you do with polynomials, at least at this early stage of dealing with them. So how do I simplify polynomial expressions is the essential question. Fairly straightforward. Um, can you pause the video and see if you can find the mistakes in the problems below? When you're ready to continue to hit play, and we'll go through them together. All right. So apparently the person who did this one thinks that you add four plus four, whoopsie, four plus four to get eight and 25 plus 25 to get 50, but that's not right at all. It's a multiply. Now, I would recommend pulling a 2 out of both of those because um, now they're both perfect squares, and that tells me that the factoring is probably going to be this. There we go. Because um, a 2x times a 2x is a 4x, a 5 times a 5 is a 25, and to make your middle term cancel out, you have a uh, one of these middle terms would be a positive 10, the other would be a negative 10, and they cancel out. Okay, so think we're adding as opposed to multiplying, it looked like. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, um, that looks good. That looks good. That is 12x. That is 5x. Oh man, they are close. 12 and 5 is 17, not 19. So there's the mistake. Um, now, as far as how would we fix that? Well, I mean, I like the 5 and the 1, the 5x and the x. It pretty much can't be anything else. Um, maybe it was like 3 and 4? Or, yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff that multiplies together to get 12. Let's see. Um, 3 and 4 would be a 15 and 4. 15 and 4 to make 19. So that's a 4x, and that's a 15x. If everything was positive, you could get, uh, you could get a positive 19 here. So if that's a plus and that's a plus, and now I think everything actually does work out. You still get your 5x squared. 4 times 3 is still 12. Middle terms, 4x plus 15x is 19x, and there we have it. There is no new vocabulary for this lesson. It's going to be the same old stuff, just a lot of it. A lot, a lot, a lot of factoring. There's a dot there. There we go. So, I said there wasn't going to be anything new. There, it, it, it's really not. So let me show you this. So first off, what this means. We have a binomial over another binomial. And we would like to simplify. Just like if I had, say, um, 24 over 32. These two numbers here have a common factor. Their common factor is 8. If I would factor out an 8, and then we can cancel out that common factor, that fraction reduces down to 3 fourths. Just like how you learned back in probably, what, sixth grade, how to simplify fractions. You divide by a common factor, top and bottom. Well, that's really what we're going to be doing here. So right now, I'm looking at the top here and the bottom here, and I'm seeing, well, the top has a common factor of 2. Oopsie. If you divide by 2, you get a 1 left over. The denominator has a common factor of, well, we could say 4, we could say 2. Well, let's try 4. Let's see what happens. I mean, 4 is the greatest common factor. So we'd get um, x plus 8. Now, can I cancel out a common factor? 
Well, yes and no. Um, this four down here, I was debating whether I should factor out a two or a four because if I have if I factor out a two, these twos can cancel out. That's a common factor. Two and four is not a common factor. And with them canceled out, I don't need the parentheses. But on the bottom, I guess I, I probably would need to remultiply this 2 back out, wouldn't I? The 2 times by the x and the 2 times by the 8. So that would actually be my final answer. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck does this thing here mean? So x does not equal 8. What, why do we care? Well, the reason why we have this is because if you would plug in negative 8 in for x, that's this one here, it would make your denominator equal zero. And you know, like the whole rule for math, like you're not allowed to divide by zero. So this problem, x is allowed to be any number except for negative eight. Even though we're not solving right now, we're just simplifying, that's kind of required because if x was allowed to be negative eight, then this problem is impossible to solve. It, it, it doesn't exist, okay? And later on, we could actually use these things to our advantage to help us factor polynomials. But for now, he's just kind of extra information to make sure the problem is still doable. All right. So I'm looking here on top. What do we have in common? We have a 2t. I think they both can give up leaving a t and a minus 1. Down the bottom, they both have a 3 they could give up, leaving a t and a minus 1. Huh. And look at that. Look at this. They have a common factor of this t minus 1. Look, t minus 1, t minus 1. Which means we are allowed to cancel out that. That is the common factor that both the top and the bottom share. And so when I factored, or when I've canceled out the common factor, we have 2t over 3. That really is going to be kind of like the main goal of this lesson, is we're going to be factoring polynomials. We're going to be looking for common binomial factors a lot of the times, canceling them out, and getting a simplified fraction. All right, so I've done two, and, and really this whole lesson just comes down to a million problems of this type of stuff, okay? So I've done a couple, I'm gonna have you try a couple, and we'll go back and forth. So take your time and do, think back in your brain of the factoring you used to do, and look for common factors, top and bottom, you can cancel out. Okay, go ahead and do these two right now. All right, letter C, top, is divisible by two. Uh, actually, I can do a four. And I'd have a g plus two left behind. Bottom is divisible by three, and I'd have a g plus two left behind. That's good news for me. Mm, let's do that. Then these guys can cancel out, and we get four thirds. There you go, this big, huge, ugly thing simplifies out to just four thirds. The, the variable completely cancels out. All right, so now we've got two trinomials that we can factor on the top. So here's my fraction bar, two, 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 m and m. Factors of 15 are one and 15, three and five. Well, I'm guessing it's gonna be the three and the five. And just give myself a little more space here. Um, to make this become a positive two in the middle, we would need this to be a positive five and a minus three. So I get five M minus three M would be a positive two M. And then my negative 15 does work. Negative three times by positive five is negative 15. Okay, so my top has been factored. 
month. And you might have needed more space to do this. I have years and years and years of experience doing this. So I can do a lot of these mentally or with very little work. I encourage you to show work if you need to. You got space. Denominator. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. M and M. Now, remember I said we could kind of use these things to our advantage here? This is essentially telling us almost what the solutions, the factors of the denominator are. Remember before, we'd say like m squared minus m minus 6. If we had this as an equation, we would do our factoring. Then we'd do the thing of setting them both equal to 0 and solving. Well, we know that this, those are not allowed to be the solutions. So we could actually kind of work a little bit backwards in our heads to figure out what these are going to be. Like this would have been m minus 3 and m plus 2, right? Because if I add 3 to both sides, it would look like that. If I subtract 2 to both sides, it would look like that. That is going to be the solutions or the, the, the factors of this. And, and I encourage you to check it. We have m squared. We have negative 2 plus 3m is a negative 1. No. I guess my signs are backwards. It should be a negative 3 and a positive 2. Oh, yeah, I just typoed from here. Negative 3, positive 2, because now that's a positive 2m, and a negative 3m does make negative 1. And my last terms multiplied together do give us negative 6. Now, if this seemed too complicated for you, ignore it. Again, these are just there to make sure that this doesn't give us a... a, a an answer that we're not allowed to have. Um, but it can be useful in helping you figure out what these factors are. Okay, so just throwing that part out there. Now, do we have any common factors, top and bottom? We do. An m minus 3 and an m minus 3 can cancel. That is a common factor, top and bottom, and we can eliminate them, leaving me with m plus 5 over m plus 2. m plus 5 over m plus 2. And that's it. Factor, factor, simplify. Oopsie. Okay, you did 2. I'll do 2. So let's see. Up top. X, X. Down below. Actually, the, the denominator is a little bit easier for me here. Because um, it's one of those guys, they're both perfect squares. It's probably going to be 4 and 4. Since there's no middle term, my middle term is going to cancel out because one's going to be a positive 4 and one's going to be a negative 4. And that's actually this clue here tells me that as well. Now, as far as the top, factors of 36 are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, I'm going to try the pair that's closer together, which would be the 4. Oh, I forgot 6 and 6. Uh, I'm still going to try 4 and 9, um, because 4 and 9, somehow it can make a 5 in my brain. That's what my brain's telling me. So I'm going to try 4 and 9. In order to make this a negative 5, the 9 would be the negative, and the 4 would need to be the positive. So now that would give us negative 9x, positive 4x, which combines together to give us negative 5x. And if you wanted to see that, I'm not going to show this all the time, but if you wanted to see it, there's negative 9x, positive 4x. There. Those combine together to give you the, the negative 5. Okay. Looking for common factors here. We have plus 4 and a plus x plus 4 and x plus 4. Common factors. We cancel them out. x minus 9 over x minus 4 is our solution. And remember that x is still not allowed to equal a negative 4 or a positive 4. Okay. Oh, isn't he pretty? I got three different variables. I've got m's and x's and g's. So let's see here. Hmm. Well, the top 
has an x cubed, I can give up. 3m cubed x squared plus 1. The denominator has an x cubed, I can give up. But that's supposed to be a cubed. There we go. 4g squared, and then that, that x cubed is gone, minus x. Okay, so after all that junk, my x cubes here, this, that is a common factor that I can cancel out. So, boom, boom, boom. And actually, what I'm, I'm also looking inside, as I was pausing, I'm, my brain's going, um, is there anything else in common here? Three, four, no. G's, no. M's, no. X's? Well, they both have X's, but I can't factor an X out of both of these because both of these terms don't have X's. Same thing here. So, no, there's actually nothing else in common. So then, 3m cubed x squared plus 1 over 4g squared minus x is our answer. So that problem was ugly, but when I looked for a common factor, in this case it was a, a monomial factor, um, that monomial factor canceled out. Right. So these are different types of factoring we've done. We've factored polynomials like this. We factored polynomials like this, just looking for a, the greatest common factor, the GCF. Okay, two for me, two for you. Let's go ahead and pause the video and do these two right now. And when you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through them together. Let's see here. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking, and the top, everything is divisible by 2. So I'm going to factor a 2 out of that. m squared minus 3m minus... I'm not doing that right, because everything's not divisible by 2, is it? Hmm. Hmm. So actually, I don't think I can factor anything out of the top first. Um, can I factor anything out of the bottom? No, doesn't look like it. Originally, I was going to say like threes or fours, but no, I, I, I can't. So I guess I just have to go back to factoring this the old school way. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. 2m and m. Factors of 18, we've done this once already, was 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. And on the bottom, well, we're going to have some more things to look at. Um, that is either a 1 and a 4 or a 2 and a 2. And that is a 1 and 27, 3 and 9. Hmm. Is that it? I think so. Now, check this out. Look at this. Three, negative 3 over 2 and 9 over 2. And look at all my factors. 3 over 2. 9 over 2, that's a hint, a big, big, big hint at what my things are going to be. Because that's the combination of the numbers that could make this as a solution. Because like if I would solve this equation, remember that those zero product property, I would minus 9 on both sides or add 9 on both sides and then divide by 2, it would look like a fraction. Now, I don't know the right signs, the, the pluses and minuses here yet. That's relatively easy. I mean, to get a negative 12 in the middle, if this was an 18m and this is a 6m, well, 18 would be the negative, that would be the positive, boom, boom. And I can see 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. So there's the top, the bottom done. Top. Unfortunately, the little, uh, this dude over here off to the side, does not give you any hints about the polynomial on the top. You just have to do that one on your own. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing and checking in my head 
I'm thinking about this three and this six. Here, three, six. That's a three M, that's a 12 M. Can a three and a 12 make a nine? Well, yeah, actually it can if, if the signs are right. If this is a negative 12 and a positive three, does that all work out? 2m and m is m squared. Positive 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Negative 12m, positive 3m. Yeah, so actually I'm going to go through and throw it in red now because that actually does work. I mean, that was just a guess and check and just that was, I mean, I can do a lot of that in my head, but let's see. Ooh, common factors. 2m plus 3, 2m plus 3. Boom, boom. Cancel them. So if m minus 6 over 2m minus 9 left over. Okay, what do we got going on here? Hey, we know what factors of 20 to use, don't we? We know it's not 10 and 2 or, or 1 and 20. So y and 5. Goodness. Start over. Start the whole thing over. Let me try this again. Y and 5, Y and 20. There we go. Let's try that. My goodness. All right. Now, what would those signs have to be to make the denominator work out? Well, to make this be a positive Y in the middle, we need to have the five being the plus and the four being the minus. That way you have more positives, five y's and four negatives. Up top, hmm. Well, factors of 20 are the same, one and 22 and 10, four and five. Factors of six are one and six, two and three. Ideally, I would like to try the, the 2 and the 3 and the 4 and the 5 first. But this is going to be guess and check. I have no clue. So I'm just putting them in just like they are in the original problem. But you know what? I don't think this is going to work. I uh, My brain's telling me that in all the other problems we've done, if our goal is to simplify the polynomial, my guess is the top is going to have one of these things. So, you know what? I don't think it's the 2 and the 3. I think it's the 1 and the 6. So I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to go with that for now. That way maybe, maybe those two are the same. A y, y, 5, 5. Maybe it's those two that are the same. I don't know. But... I, I know that the goal is usually to cancel something out, so I'm going to try to make that happen. So let's see. Um, that's a 20. Nope. That's a 30. And that's a 4. Now, 30 and 4 can't make 19. Well, what if we switch to 6? Six? 6 is over here. 1's over there. That gives us 24 and five. Oh, that can make a 19 if we subtract them, if the signs are different. So if the 24 was a negative and the five was a positive, that all works out. And these two now are common factors. Y minus four, Y minus four. They cancel. And we have left behind a six Y plus a five over just a Y plus five. All right, so using as many clues as you can can reduce the amount of work you have. You know, like the work smart, not hard process. I could have gone through with two and three all of these combinations before finally trying the one and the six or recognizing that these, something on the bottom would, should probably cancel with something up top and trying to make that happen. All right, let's see here. Hmm. The, so the top has four terms. That, that's the thing that stuck out with me when I first um, started doing this. 
The denominator I can factor pretty easily. I mean, it gives me clues right here of what this is going to be. And it's just not that hard. This is a fairly easy factoring anyway. So the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And everything's going to be positive. So that bottom part's done. Top part. You know, I'm going to do this in two different steps. So step number one, I'm going to, from these two here, I'm going to factor out an x squared. From those two there, I'm going to factor out a negative 4. The reason why I chose a negative is so that the stuff inside the parentheses was positive. If I were to factor out just a 4, then this would be a negative x and a negative 1. And then these two parentheses thingies wouldn't be the same. But now from here, I can factor farther. The common factor is um, x plus 1. And I have an x squared minus 4 left behind. My goodness, is this problem going to be tricky? Do you see where the tricky is yet? Besides the fact that those two can cancel, there is actually more. So that would give me x squared minus 4 over x plus 2, but that's not done. Do you remember what I was saying before in the lessons like this where it was actually the previous lesson, factor completely. After you factor, you, you always check to see, can you factor more? And this, I'm almost positive, does factor more. My clue is that these are both perfect squares. X, X, 2, 2. My middle term is gone, which means one of these would be a positive 2 and one would be a negative 2. Look at that another set of factors. So this whole problem simplifies down to just x minus 2. So I factored here. I recognize that this could factor more, and so we did. I factored in the denominator and factored out what I can. And eventually everything in the denominator did factor out, did cancel out. And we have just x minus 2 as our solution. Okay, let's see if that same thing happens here. Um, I have four terms up top. Hmm, from these two, I could factor out a y. From these two, I could factor out a 2. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not sure if this will work out or not. I'm probably going to make this a negative 2 because these are both negatives. So that'd be a 3x plus 4. 3x plus 4. Okay, that all worked out. So the top of this would now be a 3x plus 4 and a y minus 2. So there's my 3x plus 4 I've pulled out here. Here's the y and the minus 2 left behind. If this is very confusing to you, you might want to check out uh, the previous lesson on this. Denominator. Well, we need to factor this. I'm out, I, 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 I squeeze the screen over because I was looking at my clues over here as well. That does give me some insight on what this needs to be. Do you see the four thirds? Four thirds looks a lot like this, doesn't it? A four and a three in one set, and two and two in one set. So you know what? I'm thinking we might be on the right track. I think this would be a three X and an X. I'm thinking it's gonna be a four and a, well, four times what is eight? Four times two. I gotta get my signs right. Um, to get a negative two x in the middle, the positive four x and the six x, we need the six to be a negative and the four to be a positive. So plus here, minus here. And that's weird. These cancel. 
Oh. I was thinking that these canceled too, but this is a Y and this is an X. Man, if they... By the way, what I was thinking, if they would both cancel, your answer here would just be one. Like if top and bottom cancel, just like if you have the fraction three thirds, it equals one. Um, but that's not actually what happens here. I was mistaken because this is a Y and this is an X. So our answer is just Y minus two over X minus two. So I guess this goes like this. That we can keep all the, the problems together. All right. A couple more for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video and try these two right now. The fact that this only has one number here is actually a clue. Um, it tells me this is going to be one of those perfect square things. Like, um, it's going to be um, like these two are going to be the exact same on both sides, which is why there's only one solution. And these are both perfect squares, which tells me it's probably going to be a 3m and a 4, which I could have also guessed from here. And the signs are positive everywhere. Up top. Well, all of that stuff up top is even. They're all divisible by 2. 3m squared minus 5m minus 12. So I guess I'm just going to factor more over here somewhere. So 3m plus 4, 3m plus 4. All right, 2 times by what well i'm gonna guess a 3m and a 4 not positive but if i want stuff to cancel i gotta have a 3m probably plus 4. this is an educated guess not guaranteed over here to make this multiplication all work out 3m times m is 3m squared a positive 4 times by a negative 3 would give us a negative 12. now i'm going to check my math that is 3m squared, that is negative 12, okay? What about my middle term? Negative nine plus four is a negative nine m plus four m equal to negative five? It is, okay? So my educated guess worked out. Cancel, boom, ba doom. And what's left over? Well, we have a Denominator, 3m plus 4. Numerator, I would remultiply this dude back out. So I would have 2m minus 6. Because we're simplifying. We're not, we're not, I mean, we are factoring, but the goal is to simplify each thing. It's not as simplified if you have parentheses in the problem that we can get rid of. We get rid of them. So this is what we should have for our final answer. All right, letter L. Hmm. Things I see. Top is all divisible by 2x. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to change color. I've been using red the whole lesson. I'm going to change here. And I'm going to put the 2x up here. I want to save a little, little bit of space. So we got x squared minus 3x minus Four. The whole denominator is divisible by 3x, giving me x squared plus 1. Okay, I guess so. I don't see anything. Ooh, oh, I lied. Not x squared, just x plus 1. Okay, so I'm not really seeing anything else. Actually, I'm, I'm going to bump him down. He's going to just be part of my worked out solution. So I have a 2x times by, I'm curious if I can factor this more. I'm pretty sure I can. So I'm going to try to break it down here into well, x and x. 
Um, my guess is actually, instead of this being a two and a two, it's gonna be a four and a one. Again, I think I wanna have an X plus one. I'm not positive, but I think so to make stuff cancel. So I'm gonna guess at that because one times negative four is negative four. And if I check all my, my math in between, I mean, x times x is x squared. Again, that's a negative four, positive one x, negative four x does combine together to give us a negative three x. So this math all does appear to work out, which means this cancels and this cancels. Do you see the other thing that cancels? Did you stop here? There's one more common factor. And maybe you can't see it, but if I rewrite it like this, do you see a common factor now? It's this x. This x can cancel out. A factor is anything that's being multiplied together to get a larger product. Well, this x is being multiplied by the 3 and by this x plus 1 to get a larger product. Same thing with this x. It's being multiplied by 2 and this junk and this junk to give the larger product. So they can cancel out. That's a common factor. So we have 2x minus 8 over 3. I redistributed this through 2x minus 8 over 3. All right. Ooh. What's going on here? So we've got a polynomial divided by polynomial times by another one. Now really what this is testing is it's testing your knowledge of multiplying fractions a little bit. Now I'm not going to deal with this yet. I'm going to I'm going to factor this. This piece up top here looks like it should factor and then I'm going to show you what we can do with all of this that makes this not probably as ugly as you feel it is. So up top, that first piece factors into what? X and X, four and one, negative and positive. Is that the exact same polynomial as one up above? X squared minus three minus four? X squared minus three X minus four. It is. I, I recognize that it, it factored exactly the same. Oh, cool x plus 1 times by 4 over x minus 4. All right, so digging back in your sixth grade brain, when you are multiplying fractions together, the rule is, so this is a little uh, mathematical aside, if you're multiplying fractions, and I'm going to sneeze. There you go, only one. And when you're multiplying fractions, 3 fourths times by, I don't know, 2 eighths. The rule is you multiply across the top, you multiply across the bottom. You can kind of think of this as one big fraction like this. That's what we're going to want to do, is we're going to want to think of it as one big fraction just separated by multiplication. So this becomes times times. I'm, I'm just throwing parentheses to kind of make it look like it used to. I mean, if you have this junk times by this junk, you kind of do need parentheses to kind of group the things together. So look at this. Now we have this dude and this dude cancels. But also this x minus 4 that was separated before, because of the rules of multiplication of fractions, you can kind of think of it as one big ugly fraction being all multiplied together. This dude is a factor now of this denominator, and he can factor with that one on top. So we're left with just plain old four. This four right here, this little guy, is the only guy that remained after all the canceling in this problem.
All right. Now, we know the rule. We can kind of fix this from the beginning. Oopsie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the parentheses this way. So it's kind of like that and that. So this is all being multiplied together. The top is being multiplied together. The bottom is being multiplied together. The only look thing I can factor from the beginning of the problem looks to be this piece. You know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right here. So we got a two x and x. I'm gonna guess it's a two x minus three, so these cancel. Not guaranteed, but I'm um, kind of sure. That's what my brain tells me. So if that is a two x minus three, that would have to be an x plus one. That way, the negative three times one is negative three. And I'm gonna check my math here. Negative three x, positive two x combines together to give us a negative one x. Yes, it does work. So the first, the last, the inners, the outers, everything works. So I'm gonna rewrite this now because this is getting kind of ugly. So this new problem looks like two x minus three times by a nine x over a 3x and an, a 2x minus 3 and an x plus 1. Okay, that's what all of this rewritten would look like that. So let's see, what can we cancel out? Well, we took a stab at that and it worked. Good for us. Do you see any other common factors? This x. Again, this would be like saying 9 times x on the denominator. That would be saying like 3 times x times well, x plus 1. After this got canceled out, we'd have this. Well, those x's can cancel. And actually, that 9 and that 3, they have a common factor too, don't they? Because 9 is just 3 times 3. Boom cancel. So in the end, we have 3 over x plus 1. That is the most simplified form of that polynomial expression. So I'm going to pause there, and I want you to relook through that problem, because that was a lot going on there. So we factored this piece. We then recognize because this is multiplication of fractions, we just can multiply the tops together, multiply the denominators together. Then looking for common factors, these factored. But also, we had some factoring to do here. The x's canceled. And the factor, or the, the, the 9 over 3 could simplify, because like the fraction 9 over 3 can simplify. So we canceled out a factor of 3, and so we had 3 up top and x plus 1 on the denominator. All right. Only one for you this time, and this may be the last problem. We'll see. No, it's not. But go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. This is going to take some time because all four of these are bigger factoring guys. So go ahead and pause the video and do this right now. <laughs> all right. So you notice that we actually have three things that the X's are not allowed to be on the bottom. So that tells me you're probably going to have an X plus two, an X plus one, and an x minus 3, those are probably the three things in the denominator somewhere. And there, I mean, there, there should be a, a fourth one. It might be a repeating of one of these. But that's what this is going to kind of equal in my brain. Okay, so I'm just going to start here. So up top, boom, 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 x plus 1, x minus 1. Those are both perfect squares. There's no middle term. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. I think that is the right factoring there. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure of this now. Denominator, boom, 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 x, x. 
factors of that would probably be two and three because a two and a three can make a one in the middle if the three is negative and the two is positive and you should have already done this problem you should have already factored this so i'm not telling you anything you don't know hopefully when you are multiplying things together multiplying fractions together you can just kind of well multiply across the top so i'm just gonna I mean add in there's my multiply dot and i'm going to start factoring these other guys and it's going to look like one big huge long ugly fraction all right so let's see um well let's do the denominator first why not i don't know i'm just picking one x and x has to be a three and a one i don't know the signs yet but it has to be three and one 3x and 1x to make my denominator have a negative 2x in the middle I would need the 3 to be the negative and the 1 to be the positive positive. and you double check all the math and it does work out x times x is x squared my middle terms look good and negative 3 times positive 1 is a negative 3 so all that's good up top x x going to be a 4 and a 2. It's going to be a negative 4 and a positive 2. And all I'm doing is I'm going through that same process I usually just write, I wrote out here, just in my head. 4x, 2x, to make this become a negative 2, this would have to be a negative 4 and a positive 2. And then I double check, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. All right, so there is what we have. And remember how I, I took a guess that this is the factors of the denominator? Look, x plus 2, x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 1. That's what, there they are. Okay, so those things can help. Now, let's see what we can cancel here. I can zoom. There we go. There's an x plus 2 here and an x plus 2 there. There's an x plus 1 here. There's an x plus 1 there. And that's it. Now, we are not allowed to leave our answer, well, like this, or even just with x minus 1 and x minus 4. Um, because if our job is to simplify, this is not simplified. This is a polynomial, or this is two binomials being multiplied together. We should multiply them together if we can. So we're going to. So this is just a little practice multiplication again. So what does that top equal as a polynomial again? Well, that would be x squared minus 4x minus 1x plus 4. My middle terms can combine together. And I'm just going to do it right here. A negative 4 and a negative 1 makes negative 5x. Down below, we've got x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. My middle terms can combine together. A negative 3 and a negative 3 is a negative 6x. And there we have it. And I don't know if it's needed, but we could always add this extra little dude of x cannot equal three because that's the only thing that's left here in the denominator the factors that this bottom's not allowed to equal zero that's the only thing you'd plug in for x to make the bottom equal zero not sure if it's required but why not we'll throw it in there so there is our answer and that was fairly tough hopefully you're able to get all your factoring right and you probably canceled stuff and maybe you left it here maybe you didn't know you're supposed to remultiply it back out well now you do that four is bothering me. There we go. Application. Oh. In the rectangle below, the area can be represented by the expression. Okay, so the area is 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. I like to write it down. If the length of the short side is x minus 2, what is the length of the other side of the polynomial? Sounds a lot like division, doesn't it? Like if I knew 
I mean the area was 12 and this side is 3 well then 12 divided by 3 is 4 or what number times by 3 is 12 it's 4 it's, it's division well now we kind of know a little bit how to do some division so I'm gonna say 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 and I'm gonna divide it by an x minus 2 I'm very quickly realizing I don't have space to do the work right there do I uh, I guess I do I can I can work down below here so this would give me boom ba doom ba doom ba doom I'm gonna guess an x minus 2 that way stuff cancels I mean it, it's it's logical right if something's gonna cancel here then I have to have an x minus 2 so then this other one would be a 2x plus 1 I'm figuring out what it would take to make this work out like 2x times x is 2x squared a positive 1 times by a negative 2 is positive no it'd be negative 2 so this would have to be a minus 1 negative 1 minus 2 is positive 2 or negative 1 times negative 2 is ne positive and then this mass should give me a negative 4x a negative 1x and those do combine together to give me negative 5 okay so we figured out what that should be cancel cancel and we're left with 2x minus 1 which would be the length of that other side 2x minus 1 I divided we, we, we took the area divided by the length and that would give us the width and if you're looking at first problem you're going man how in the heck are we supposed to do something like that I really 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 do encourage you to think of a much simpler problem like I did when I did the example of like if the area is 12 and we know the side is 3 you would take 12 divided by 3 and get 4 well that's pretty much what we did here's our 12 we divided by 3 after we did some stuff we found out the solution is 4 okay being able to think of a simpler problem is an excellent problem solving strategy in the previous problem if the area of the rectangle is 90 what is the actual length of each side of the rectangle oh okay so if the area is 90 if this is equal to 90 I want to know like what is this length and this length as like centimeters is it nine centimeters three centimeters there should not be any X's left over so I'm going to pause the video or I'm gonna let you pause the video right here and see what you can do so go ahead and do the problem right now all right so there's a few ways you could do this um probably the easiest way no is just set the area equal to 90 like it put 90 right here so i'm gonna zoom in just, i need to zoom out just so i can write both things so 90 equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 all right so i plugged in 90 in this for the area now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna see if I can find X like I'm gonna, I'm gonna minus 90 on both sides 0 equals 2 X squared minus 5 X minus 88 because that's what we do with polynomials as we set them equal to 0 we factor and use the zero product property that's how we solve these equations um, boom ba -dum. I'm gonna try to factor I don't know if it's gonna work out I hope it does factors of 88 hmm interesting so we've got 1 and 88 we've got 2 and 44 we will have 4 and 22 we're gonna have 8 and 11 out of those choices I'm I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up and well I'll just throw them in randomly first I wasn't gonna I was gonna think about it first but you can't see me thinking so I'll do it this way this is 8x this is 22x can an 8x and a 22x 
Make a 5x in the middle? Nope. So let's switch the 8 and 11. Maybe those are backwards. Maybe the 8 should be here and the 11 should be there. 11x and 16x. Can that make a 5x? Why, yes, it can. And it could make a negative 5, because we need it to be negative, if the 16 is negative and the 11 is positive. So I'm pretty sure this is right. 2x times x is 2x squared. We already just calculated the middle term. And 11 times by negative 8 is negative 88. OK. So then zero product property says that either 2x plus 11 is equal to 0 or x minus 8 is equal to 0. x equals 8 on the right. Solving the left, subtract 11, 2x equals negative 11, divide by 2 on both sides, and x equals negative 11 halves. I'm, I'm not thinking it's going to be that one. Because, first off, well, there's nothing saying that x can't be negative, but if I plug in negative, that's, that's negative 5.5. If I plug in negative 5.5 here for x, negative 5.5 minus 2 is going to be a negative side length. We, we can't have that. My calculator doesn't want to work, I guess. Awesome. Whatever. It's negative. Okay. That's not going to work. So it has to be the x equals 8. So if this was x minus 2 and this was 2x minus 1. All right. So the actual side lengths would have to be then, if x is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6. That's how big the short side is. 2 times 8 minus 1 would give me 16 minus 1 is 15, is the length of the big side. And if my calculator would work, your calculator does. I have another calculator sitting next to me. If I do 15 times 6, look at that, we get 90. Okay, so it all works out. Letter C. Write a simplified polynomial expression for the area. We're going to take length times width. We're going to multiply those two things together. Area is length times width. And when we multiply those things together, we're going to then simplify it by, you know, canceling junk out. So I'm going to have, um, well, x squared plus 3x minus 4 times by x squared plus 5x minus 14 over x minus 2, x minus 1. All right, so here is this long side. Here is the short side. Factoring. I really don't have to do anything to the denominator. It's going to stay x minus 2 and x minus 1. But the top, there we go. I'm thinking this is going to factor in these first two. This is going to factor into the second two. x and x. Hmm. 4 and 1, and that will be a positive 4 and a negative 1. And feel free to do your, your rainbows here in the middle to double check the math, but I'm almost positive I'm right. Second one is going to be x and x, and I was thinking to be 7 and 2. And to make my signs right, it would need to be a positive 7 and a negative 2. Now I'm double checking my head. Everything looks good there. All right, so then cancels, 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 cancels. So there's nothing left in the denominator. We still have the x plus 4 and the x plus 7 in the numerator. If we multiply them together because we wanted our area as a polynomial, write a simplified polynomial expression for the area. We need to simplify this. 
So we're going to multiply it out and we're going to get x squared plus 4x plus 7x plus 28. And we simplify these middle terms together. 4 plus 7 is 11x. That is our simplified polynomial area. Last question. If the problem above, oh, in the problem above, if the area of the rectangle is 108 feet, what is the length of each side in feet? So if the area is 108, what is the length of each side in feet? So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here. I think that's a good spot for it. So go ahead and pause the video and finish this last problem right now. If the area is 108, what is the length of each side in feet? Darn, my calculator doesn't even want to close. So I can't use the on-screen calculator. I'm just going to use the calculator next to me. All right, let's see. So if... Mm -mm -mm. So if x squared plus 11x plus 28 is 108 because remember we said this was the area so i'm plugging oops that in right there and then we're going to solve so i'm going to subtract 108 to both sides x squared plus 11 x minus uh it's probably going to be 80 negative 80 28 minus 108 is negative 80 and then I'm going to factor. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Factors of 80 hmm, are going to be 1 and 80, 2 and 40, 4 and 20, 5 and 16, I think. 5 times 16 is 80. And that's the one I think it's going to be. There's probably more factors. Yeah, there'd be 8 and 10. I'm not sure if 80 goes into 6. Or 6 goes into 80. No, it doesn't. Um, but I, I like this. I'm looking at 5 and 16, and I'm looking at that 11 in the middle and going, you know what? A 5 and a 16 can make an 11 if the 16 was positive and the 5 was negative. And all my signs will work out. This is this is the correct factoring of this. And hopefully you got that as well. Which means that x, oops, minus 5 equals 0, or x plus 16 equals 0. You solve both. Either x equals 5, or x equals negative 16. I think we could pretty fairly solidly say that the answer is not the x is not going to be negative 16 because that's going to make negative numbers in a lot of different places and maybe that's no good so now if i use five we just have to figure out what this is as uh, a number and what this is as a number and this would be so much easier if i can have my graph my graphing calculator um do you know what I'm going to do? I'm, 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 I'm going to take my graphing calculator I have sitting next to me. It looks like this one. I'm going to type this in, except I'm going to put a 5 in there. Or, or no, maybe I'll do this the hard way because my calculator is not working. You try that. I guess I'm just going to do it by hand. So that we have 25 plus 15 minus 4 over 5 minus 2 is 3. 25 plus 15 minus 4 divide by 3 is I got this side to be 12 <clears throat> and then we have 25 plus 25 minus 14 over 4 that's 50 minus 14 divided by 4 is this side is 9 and that math does work out that 12 times 9 does give us an area of 108, so we have it.
That is the thing that x is, and that is the length and the width. And I believe that's the end of this lesson. Yep. And there's not even a summary here. Okay. But it was a lot, a lot, a lot of factoring. And thank you so much for hanging around this whole time and watching the video and, and picking all this up. Um, until next time, toodles.